This winter, I took my 2019 Toyota Tacoma out from Atlanta to Colorado and back. It was about 4,000 miles of driving. I tested out a new tune and my winter overland setup. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that I had all the gear that I needed to survive the winter cold and the performance in my vehicle. I made a couple stops on the way. I stopped at Hot Springs National Park in Arkansas. I made another stop at the Panhandle of Texas at a ranch. And then I entered Colorado at Great Sand Dunes National Park. Uh, from there, I went up into central Colorado and made a jaunt over to Denver, spent a bunch of time in Idaho Springs, went up to Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, I ended up snowboarding at Copper Mountain, linking up with some friends, and made my way back in two days. Hot Springs National Park was very dog friendly, so was Great Sand Dunes. Um, they were great stops when I had my pup with me. I did some mountain passes um, and it was really pretty, but also just a big elevation change from Atlanta. I got to do some snow wheeling too. Um, it was cool to have a buddy come by and I can talk more about that later. So first to give you information about my truck, it's a 2019 Tacoma off-road. There's 33 inch tires. Uh, I'm re-geared with 529s. I have heavy bumpers front and back and a slider. You add the weight of my winch, a roof rack, a water port, a bed rack, a rooftop tent. Um, I'm pretty loaded down. The tune that I have on my truck right now is the Nexus Blackhawk. This is actually the Beta 2.0 tune that I have now. I've had the regular one on before, um, but I wanted to test some new changes that are coming out soon. Um, I also ran it on premium because I know it packs way more power. The thing about driving at altitude that I learned was that your truck is much weaker. There's less oxygen in the air, so your fuel is more rich. That's why you sometimes see 85 octane on the pumps there. Um, yeah, my truck felt weaker for sure, um, but it had no problem taking on these mountain passes and my transmission did not blow up. I even got to snow wheel altitude and when I did that, I had three other friends with my dog in the back, so I was fully loaded. The truck was spot on though. A uh, cool thing I learned about Colorado is there's a lot of shooting areas, so I took a target out with my buddy. My friend Kyle happened to be in the Denver area. He also drove from Atlanta, so it was cool. Uh, when he linked up, we hit a trail near Idaho Springs. Uh, it was different for both of us to snow wheel because we hadn't done that before. Once we started uh, paving a new path is when it got tricky. The snow started getting really deep and uh, I got to pull Kyle back onto the trail and then we ended up turning around because it was getting a little sketchy. We did learn a lot from the snow wheeling experience. Um, first of all, it's hard to find trails to ride. Once you get past the residential areas, the plows just kind of left the snow piled up, which honestly was probably a good thing for us. Um, the snow, when it got super deep, was hard to uh, maneuver. Um, we were lucky on this trail that we hit to have kind of a tracked out area. We both aired down to about 15 PSI. Uh, I know you can air down to like 10 to 15 for snow uh, and just kind of kept it steady and, and crept through the snowy woods. Uh, it was really cool to be able to do staying in four high so you have some traction control and so you can fling the snow out of your treads uh, just to make room to pack it down with some more snow. Some of the creek crossings ended up being thick uh, with ice, um, but you could still break them with a heavy truck. We did hit one spot that we couldn't pass because it was just a frozen creek. I will say that snow wheeling was probably the most fun off-roading I've done and made everything else just seem that much easier. So taking on this pretty steep dry hill with ruts was not a problem at all for my truck. Um, I feel more experienced now. As far as camping, um, this shot is somewhere near Colorado Springs and Pike National Forest. Uh, I have a pretty substantial overland camping loadout. Um, I'll walk through some of those things here, but 
Uh, winter camping is pretty cool. I mean, you get used to the cold fairly quickly after a few days. Um, it's much more quiet. There's less wildlife. Um, but you do have to make sure you are prepared with proper gear. First of all, I would say if you have a furry friend, definitely bring the furry friend. Here's my little puppy beans. Um, we were able to snuggle up, but I had to do a lot to make sure she stayed warm and comfortable on our trip. Uh, number one piece of equipment would be the diesel heater. I know they're really popular right now. This is the H calorie one, um, Chinese diesel heater kept me pretty cozy. Uh, my RTT is a Rome Vagabond. I am one of the only fools who went from a hard shell to a soft shell. The sacrifice was to save a little weight, but also to gain some of the accessories offered with this style tent. It's very comfortable. Um, there's a three inch mattress in there. Uh, and the setup time I was able to do pretty quickly. Um, over time, I did leave a sleeping bag and a blanket inside each night. My dog Beans is very confident in the tent. Um, there are, in this shot, about 25 mile per hour winds um, that we encountered while we were sleeping on a mesa in Texas. They ended up being headwinds too. One of the accessories for the RTT that I have is the insulated liner that definitely kept us warm and kept the moisture on the other side of it. The annex room is another accessory for the Rome Vagabond that was very helpful. Um, it gave you a room to stay out of the elements. And I actually had two friends camp in this room as well. Uh, I had the diesel heater pumping heat into it. My one piece of feedback to roam on this though is to make sure that the flaps could be sealed on the sides. They don't zip all the way around. I'll probably add Velcro to make sure that I can tighten that up. I did like the Devos Outdoor um, Ranger light. Uh, it is telescopic, which was really cool to have outside and inside the annex room. Um, I did buy the amber lens cover for that. Overall, I was able to pack my truck down. Um, the KB Voodoo bed rack and cargo slide out tray were very crucial to optimizing my storage space. I also have a uh, Rome box on top and for my kitchen gear, and then the Inca 4x4 trash bag. Having everything on your truck makes it so that you can travel pretty much anywhere and gain um, really cool scenery. So I hope you guys can make a plan to, to travel out west if you don't live out there. Bring some buddies. Uh, it makes camping a lot more fun when you have friends with you. Maybe a furry friend too. Um, if you have any questions about the build or the trip, reach out and subscribe.